Uh, next slide. We'll just get right into it. So just want to give you a little information about um, uh, West Philly Promise Neighborhood. So we are a U.S. Department of Education funded grant that supports cradle to career opportunities for children living or going to school in a specific area of West Philly. Um, we've been in existence since 2017 and we're set the grant ends uh, June of next year. Uh, next slide or bullet. Yeah, and so we, uh, this initiative employs a place-based cross-system collective impact model approach to its overall goal, which is to improve the education, health, and economic success for children, their families, and community. And so um, one of the things I wanted to focus my talk on is how we were able to um, build data sharing strategies into this large initiative that requires data collection um, and integration at multiple levels. Next slide. So here is just um, uh, a diagram showing the cohort that we work with. So this is the area of West Philly. Uh, Drexel University is actually encompassed in this footprint, which is at the lower right corner. Next slide. Um, in addition to working in partnership with the city of Philadelphia and the school district of Philadelphia, we also work with various um, uh, community-based organizations in a collective impact model. Next slide. Uh, and then the overall vision that we have um, specific to data is that we wanna make sure that we create a system in which we democratize access to our neighborhood survey and community indicators data to further community-led advocacy. And we wanna just make sure that the data that we have is, is put in the hands of the right people who can use it. But in order to do that, we had to develop um, a lot of trust. So one thing that had to be um, addressed from the beginning is that this, this area has been highly researched. So specifically by Drexel, as well as University of Penn and even Temple, all universities that are close to this neighborhood. And so a lot of times this neighborhood, these neighborhoods, they get, they get data taken from them, but it's never given back. Those results are never presented back to them. They're, they don't get the results of the data that they give. And so one of the things that we wanted to make sure was that um, it came across that we understood that those people who are on the ground or have lived in experience are the subject matter experts, not us. And so we wanted to make sure that all the data that we collect, that we're also sharing our findings back to the community. Um, another uh, point that we wanted to make was to include the community stakeholders and other community residents in all levels of decision-making and make sure that we compensate them for their input. And so we do that by having community-led data collection with um, where we hire community residents to be surveyors, as well as community-led data dissemination where we've hired community members to be what we call data leads to go out and share data stories to the community. Next slide. Um, we, uh, we create lots of opportunities to share data. So we have many presentations to our local community advisory committee and data partners and other type of management team uh, meetings, but we also do presentations of data and results in the community through town hall style uh, meetings. Uh, we've worked with the community to create community briefs um, and we work with both the residents and uh, the local community advisory council. And next slide. Here's just an example of some of the community briefs that we've created. Next slide. Uh, in addition to community briefs, we've also created user-friendly data dashboards for both COVID-19 vulnerability, as well as our Promise Neighborhood Community Indicators. Um, and then we've um, also wanted to make sure that we also create a community-friendly data code book on our website in an easy way to um, request data on our website. Next slide. And so this is just an example of some of the dashboards that we've created. So we have dashboards on education and racial demographics, as well as uh, housing and public safety. Next slide. 
So our work is primarily funded by the Promise Neighborhood Grant uh, with in-kind support from Drexel, the City of Philadelphia, and other partner organizations. Um, the majority of that funding um, goes towards our programming, but 25% of our funds are actually allocated to data and research. Um, to track our success, uh, one of the things that we are working on is developing a system to track who visits our web our webpage and the data downloads that they do. And so that's something that we want, want to know to see who, who is getting our data and who's using the data and for what reasons. Um, and just last year, we, um, we administer a network survey to 45 of our organizational partners who work either directly or indirectly with um, uh, children and families in Promise Neighborhood. And uh, that the purpose of that survey was to be able to, to see whether or not our collaborations with our partners were successful and identify any gaps. Um, and then with our community-led research, so we train our we train community residents to collect and disseminate data, and we um, frequently measure changes in skills and knowledge throughout that training process. Um, so we've now been in existence for about five years now, and I think some of our major successes was uh, our co-creation of our evaluation design and our survey instruments with our community partners. Um, we've also, uh, it's been invaluable to work with our community research staff in troubleshooting our different recruitment mistrust um, in recruiting uh, for our survey, as well as working out survey field logistic challenges. Um, we've worked to democratize access to data uh, so that community leaders actually feel like this data is just as much a resource as the programs. And lastly, just wanting to center community voices in the creation of evaluative and community context data stories. Uh, we continue to have challenges. Uh, one of them is, um, I didn't talk about it in this talk, but we also are in a trying to integrate data, our program data with city service data and with school academic data. And it's been a challenge in both legal, historical and political in just the fact that city service systems are so siloed. And so we've had many challenges with that. We've also had uh, lots of complex consent procedures um, that limit our, our partner's ability to uh, track use our program tracking and referral system. And lastly, uh, what I mentioned earlier was uh, we are still trying to create a way to track data usage among a community audience who, you know, typically are wary of systems that collect their personal data. So that's something that we've been working with.